Hey everybody, today we're going to learn a way where we can have Ableton randomly play through selected samples inside of the session view. It's called follow action and it is a really cool feature that lets you come up with all sorts of random things. To start things off, we are going to get a drum loop and we're just going to use this drum loop as a background beat to keep uh, context for when we start chucking these synth samples in there because uh, I'm going to use synth one shots as the source for uh, the sequence that we're going to make. So the ba the drum pattern just sounds like this. It's just a, a regular um, dubstep drum pattern. It's from the Cymatics free mothership sample pack. Uh, I've been using them a bit lately in my videos just because they're I don't have a huge amount of samples so it's easy just to go to these. Cool, so it's just a straightforward pattern. And if I open up these one shots, you'll have a listen to these. Okay, so it's a bunch of different uh, bass samples. And I can select all of these, I can drag and I can drop them onto this um, first audio clip here, right? And now it's put all of those different samples in there. And if I come down here to see my clip view, um, we can't see any of the clips because I've got 14 selected, so I mean, you can't show it all. Um, and you can see there's a bunch of information down here. It's got the sample information. And if I click this little yellow waveform button, it um, opens or closes the sample um, display. So I just click that to close it. And we're going to click on this to open this up. And this is for how um, samples get launched in the session view. So um, you've got a bunch of different modes for how you trigger them. Um, you've got quantization, so if I click that, how long is it going to take to start? I've got velocity, so that's referring to basically um, if I had velocity information written in here, how sensitive to it it would be. Um, and then I have the follow action parameters, okay? And it's got two parts to it. It's got, um, it's got the chance A and then it's got chance B. And I'm just going to be using chance A today. Um, you can explore the other possibilities down the track. And here for the follow action, this is, um, it's going to define how long it will take for the follow action to take place, right? So what is a follow action? It, if I pressed play on this guy, it would play once and it would stop right? But I'm telling Ableton to then, uh, it plays, it stops, and then what does it do? I want it to play randomly another one of these guys, and I want it to do it in time, and the timing that I want is dictated in here, and which, cl which clip it plays next is dictated by what I insert into here. So um, no action would mean stop, or keep looping if I had loop on, Stop would mean play once, then stop. Play again would play and play again. Previous, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to other. So that means it's going to play what it plays, and then it's going to play any other sample except for the one that it just played. So I set that up in there, um, and then I can change the timing. So I'm going to put that on um, the, the way the timing works is bars beats sixteenths. So I want it, um, I'm just going to put two in there and you'll hear the, the timing that it does. And then I'm just going to leave chance A at one, right? So I'm going to go ahead and press play with those um, parameters in. And just bear in mind, guys, you have to have them all selected when you're putting that in. Because if I just have one selected, then I'm just changing it for one of them. I want them all to have the same parameters. So I'm going to press play and let's have a listen and see what it does. And I'm going to press stop down here. I'm going to select them all, and then I'll change that maybe to one. And then we'll press that and hear what happens. So it's playing at once every beat. I uh, just turned the metronome on and it was playing in time. So then what we're going to do is we're going to play the drum loop and then I'm going to play around with this. I'm going to move it. And unfortunately, you can't map this parameter, um, but you're going to get an idea of, of what I'm getting at here. So I'll press play on here. And I'm going to press play on these guys. Cool. 
Cool. So I was just able to make a very cool sequence using the follow actions. Um, and the the beat pattern gives you context of actually how it would sound if it was in a track. So what we could do now is we could actually record this out. So I could come over here and I could say I want the audio from here to come into here. Um, and I'm going to set that up ready to record. I'm going to press play. <laughs> Okay, I might have cut that last one off. Oh no, I cut it off just in time. So now I've got a big long sequence that I just played out. All right, and I can actually, um, I could now abandon the session view if I wanted and go over to the arrangement view. So what I'll do is I'll grab those two clips. I'll jump over here. So basically I'm just selecting both of them, pressing tab, and then I can just drop them in here. It's a really cool way of getting things across. And I could loop that kick pattern out and have a listen. <laughs> Sweet, so that's a cool pattern um, and we could set this up so that we have that one playing and then we could chop out um, parts of other patterns and put it there if we wanted to make it, modify it, right? So let's have a listen. <laughs> Sweet. So that is how you can make pretty cool sequences. Uh, and you can take that further. You can start applying some um, some filters on it to introduce it over time and to start sort of building out a sequence and adding in new elements. And that could be the foundations of you building a really cool track. So uh, hopefully that was really useful for you guys. Um, if you don't make dubstep and you make a different style of music, basically all you need to do is apply the this to uh, this technique to different sounds. Uh, you can do it with MIDI clips as well. Um, and basically you could chuck in drum samples and you could have like really random crazy drum samples um, sequenced and then you can cut out little phrases that worked really well. So you could do drum rolls and a bunch of different things. Basically the sky's the limit. You can chuck all sorts of things into this um, follow action and create uh, random sequences that you would never think of or dream up, uh, but you're allowing the computer to basically generate a whole lot of random noise and then you can slice out what you like of it and you can delete what you don't like. And that's a really cool way to produce because sometimes you don't always have um, the inspiration to create a really cool little drum roll or something like that and you just need basically some um, influence from the random gods um, and that'll help inspire you to get stuff done. So I hope you enjoyed that video guys. I'll see you again soon in another one.